Welcome to Mikon's hardware. I have finally finished testing Proxmox on Clisere X99 D8 motherboard. The first thing I wanted to validate if PCI Express and USB pass-through is actually working on this Chinese motherboard. The other interesting topic is Turbo Boost Unlock. I was curious to know if Turbo Boost Unlock would work properly with Proxmox and virtual machines. So in this short video I am going to answer these questions and tell you a few other details. But first let's take a look at the hardware which I used for this testing. CPU Intel Xeon E5 2640V3, Motherboard Clisere X99 D8, Motherboard BIOS from Huananjie X99 F8, 32GB of memory, 4 sticks 8GB each, working at DDR4-1866 CL9, NVIDIA RTX 2080 Ti Founders Edition, Samsung 860 EVO 1TB SSD drive plus a couple of other SSD drives for Proxmox virtual machines and Proxmox itself. Power supply Corsair HX 1000W, Proxmox version 6.2-1, Windows 10 X64, version 10.0.18363, NVIDIA drivers 445.87. While testing Proxmox with Turbo Boost Unlock, I have figured out that system was refusing to start and hanging at boot. After some research and reading comments from my subscribers, I have figured out that I had to go to BIOS and disable a feature called Lock Chipset. What this feature does, I have no idea. Why it's there, I have no idea either. But if I apply Turbo Boost Unlock hack, I have to go to the BIOS and disable this feature. Without Turbo Boost Unlock, Proxmox works with the stock configuration and you don't have to apply any special settings in the BIOS, everything works out of the box. The following Proxmox virtual machine I have used to conduct all of my tests. 14 Haswell CPUs, which means 7 physical CPU cores were dedicated to the virtual machine and 1 physical CPU core was dedicated to Proxmox itself. NVIDIA RTX 2080 Ti graphics card was dedicated to the virtual machine through PCI Express pass-through, USB keyboard and USB mouse was also dedicated to the virtual machine through USB pass-through. Now let's take a look at some benchmark results. Starting with a very synthetic test, CPU Z. As you can see on the picture, Turbo Boost Unlock is actually working with Proxmox. Virtual machine with Turbo Boost Unlock is showing slightly higher results compared to the stock virtual machine. Still, the results are lower when compared to the vanilla Windows installation. Here you have to keep in mind that vanilla Windows installation uses 8 CPU cores, while virtual machine has just 7 CPU cores. Nevertheless, single-threaded performance is worse on virtual machine when compared to the vanilla Windows installation. Cinebench R15 and R20 are also demonstrating that Turbo Boost Unlock is working with Proxmox virtual machines. Here Turbo Boost Unlocked virtual machine is yet again slightly ahead of the stock virtual machine and slightly behind vanilla Windows installation. One more important test is memory speed. Somehow memory latency is better on the virtual machines when comparing to the vanilla Windows installation. I don't know how it happens, maybe benchmark is not properly testing latency in this configuration. Memory read-write is just half of the story. Let's also take a look at the CPU cache speed. Unfortunately, here is a big disappointment. Under Proxmox virtual machines, L1 CPU cache and L2 CPU cache is significantly slower when comparing to vanilla Windows installation. For example, CPU level 1 cache is almost three times as fast on vanilla Windows installation when comparing to Turbo Boost unlocked Proxmox virtual machine. Read speed 613 GB per second against almost 1700 GB per second. Write speed is also almost 3 times as fast, 245 GB per second on the virtual machine and 847 GB per second on vanilla Windows installation. Level 2 cache also suffers a lot. Under virtual machine we have around 55 GB per second, while vanilla Windows installation provides 610 GB per second. The difference is more than 10 times. CPU level 3 cache provides almost the same speed on the virtual machine and with vanilla Windows installation. After seeing such big differences in the CPU cache performance, I thought this might be the motherboard problem. That's why I have swapped my CPU, graphics card and other testing hardware onto MSI X99A Raider and revalidated all my results with the branded motherboard. But first let's take a look at some gaming benchmarks using Proxmox virtual machine. Unigen Superposition. This benchmark is very heavy on the GPU and uses very little CPU resources. 
Oddly enough, virtual machine with Turbo Boost Unlock provides the worst result. I have tested and retested. All the time, Turbo Boost Unlocked virtual machine was providing the worst result. If the stock virtual machine is not that far behind vanilla Windows installation, the Turbo Boost Unlocked virtual machine is falling significantly behind. The only guess I could have here is that original Intel microcodes are working much better with virtualization features required by Proxmox. Unlike Unigine Heaven, Shadow of the Tomb Raider is a very CPU demanding title. Here, virtual machine with Turbo Boost Unlock provides slightly better results than virtual machine without Turbo Boost Unlock, but still significantly far behind vanilla Windows installation. With Turbo Boost Unlock under virtual machine, we have just 51 minimal FPS, while vanilla Windows installation gives us 74 minimal FPS. Averages just 80 FPS under virtual machine environment and 115 FPS under vanilla Windows 10 installation. This is a very big difference, which is about 35%. And one more game I have tested is F1 2019. This is a very fast-paced game, its performance really depends on the CPU cache and memory speed, as well as memory and cache latency. Here, virtual machine with Turbo Boost Unlock provides the worst result. Even though stock virtual machine has slightly better results, it's still very far behind vanilla Turbo Boost Unlocked Windows 10 installation. 76 minimal FPS compared to 138 minimal FPS on vanilla Windows installation, as well as 106 average FPS compared to 179 average FPS on vanilla Windows installation, are really demonstrating that Proxmox virtual environment is not a gaming setup. As I have mentioned at the beginning of the video, I was really surprised by these results, and that's why I decided to retest everything with MSI X99A Raider. The results I have got with the branded motherboard were so much alike to Clisre X99D8 that I'm not even going to bother with graphs. There is simply nothing to show. This means we have two things to conclude. First, Proxmox virtual environment is working properly on Clisre X99D8 motherboard. PCI Express and USB path through is also working properly. But Proxmox virtual environment is really not a gaming setup. One more feature I wanted to explore is PCI Express bifurcation. Unfortunately, I do not have PCI Express X16 NVMe RAID cards to validate if the feature works or does not work. At least the BIOS has configuration settings for PCI Express bifurcation. If they are working or not working, I don't know. But if you're interested, the settings are there. Thus, if you're looking to build a home or work virtual environment Proxmox server, I can safely recommend you Clisera X99D8, it's the same motherboard as Tinja X99D8. Also, since I have used the BIOS from Huanangi X99F8, I can safely assume that Huanangi X99TF, Huanangi X99F8 and Huanangi X99T8 motherboards will also work properly with the Proxmox virtual environment, PCI Express and USB pass-through. In order to test PCI Express bifurcation, I will try to get myself PCI Express NVMe RAID card, but for now that's all I have for you. I hope it was interesting, I hope I have answered a few questions. Thanks for watching, thanks for listening, goodbye.